For more than 40 years and 1,600 columns, one journalist's quest for truth and honesty has taken him down many dark and seedy paths, unrelenting and unafraid. Guided by the light of truth, he has traveled many difficult journeys as a watchdog for all, ever vigilant. Then, one day, the presses fell silent. The newspaper for which he toiled closed forever. Undeterred, the scribe goes on. More than half the states in America now offer illegal sports betting, and according to the American Gaming Association, 45 million Americans will be placing bets on NFL games this season. So what about the states that have not legalized sports gambling? You can bet your bottom dollar that calls are already being made to bookies. Ohio is one of the states that still has not joined the majority, but if the Mahoning Valley is any indication, Ohioans aren't holding tight to their wallets. Indeed, wagering on football games and other illegal forms of gambling are as much a part of the Valley's history as steel making, automobile manufacturing, and the Mafia. But the Buckeye State is on the verge of ending the hypocrisy, just as it did with Vegas-style casino gambling. There's legislation making its way through the General Assembly that would legalize sports betting. That's the topic of today's video podcast presented by the Scribbler Publishing Group. I'm Bertram D'Souza, retired editorial page editor and Sunday columnist for the now-closed Youngstown Vindicator and author of No Holes Barred, a book dedicated to the 150-year-old newspaper. My guest today is Ohio State Senator Niraj Antani. Okay, my guest today is Ohio State Senator Niraj Antani, a Republican from Miamisburg who represents the 6th District. Senator Antani is one of the leaders in the General Assembly pursuing the legalization of sports betting in the state. The Senator is joining us via Zoom. This installment is one of several the podcast will air about the good, the bad, and the ugly of expanding gambling in Ohio. Uh, good afternoon, Senator. Uh, thank you for joining me um, on this video podcast. Um, our goal here is, and we're going to do a series of these, is to shed light on the push to legalize sports betting in Ohio. Um, so before we get into the questions and details of the legislation that's making its way through the Ohio General Assembly, um, I'm sure our viewers would be interested in uh, knowing a little about yourself personally and uh, politically. So if you would tell us something about yourself, we appreciate sure. it. Sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me and uh, honored to, to be here with you. Uh, my name is Neeraj Jatani. I serve as a state senator in the Ohio Senate uh, 6th District, uh, which is the most of the suburbs of Dayton. I have uh, just uh, started in the Senate this year. Prior to that, I served as a state representative in the Ohio House of Representatives uh, for six years, three terms, uh, also representing the southern suburbs of, of Dayton and um, was, was born and raised uh, in the district I represent and uh, very happy to be here with you. And uh, professionally, are you, uh, what, um, in, in addition to being a, a state legislator, are, uh, you're a lawyer, right? Uh, no, I am not. No, oh, I went I'm sorry. To one year, I went to one year, that's okay, I went to one year of law school okay. and then uh, left law school to, to run for political office. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so give us some insight uh, into the thought process uh, that you went through as you came to lead the fight in, in the General Assembly uh, to make sports betting in the state legal. Uh, what, what was the thought process there? Well, I, as you know, three years ago, the, the U.S. Supreme Court uh, sort of struck down a law that prohibited sports betting in, in many states. And after that, states started uh, their process for legalization, uh, which we are now pursuing. So I think you know, the first question is, you know, should sports betting be legalized? Uh, for me, the answer is pretty simple. It is yes, because 
frankly, the people of Ohio want it, number one. Number two, uh, if we do not legalize it, then someone will run a, a ballot initiative campaign like they did with the casinos in 2009 to, to legalize it. And so, you know, I think that is sort of the emphasis of, of, of where we are today. Okay, so um, you sponsored, you are the sponsor of, of the bill that came out of the Senate and that is now sort of uh, being debated um, and, and is to be taken back up after you come back from recess. Uh, Governor DeVine has, has expressed his support uh, for sports betting in Ohio. So um, the question I'm most often asked, and, and I'm, I'm sure you're not surprised to hear that in the Mahoning Valley, uh, gambling of all forms, legal and illegal, is, is part of our history, has been for you know, as long as steel making has been part of our history. And, and sports betting is occurring. And the one question I'm asked most often is, uh, what exactly does the legislation do? Uh, so could you give us some of the pertinent uh, uh, information in the, in the legislation? What exactly would happen if, in fact, sports betting is, is made legal in the state? Can you, you broke up a little bit. Do you mind repeating that? Uh, yeah. Um, the question I'm asked most often um, when I'm talking to people about the legalization of sports betting in Ohio is people want to know what's in the bill. Well, what does it do? What are yeah. the details? Um, you know, some of the technical aspects of it. You know, who will be able to get the licenses? Who won't? So, if you know, because of your knowledge, I, I, that's why we, we thought we should have you on because I'm sure of, of all the people in General Assembly, you might be the most knowledgeable right now. So could you give us some um, some of the details of, of yeah, the legislation? Yeah, so, uh, you know, where it currently stands uh, is you will be able to bet on sports in three ways. Uh, the first way is on your online mobile uh, application. Uh, think of this as a, a DraftKings or FanDuel. You can download an app on your phone and, and you'll be able to bet uh, on your phone, that's the first way. The second way, uh, and, and I guess I should say there will be 50 of those uh, applications that will be allowed uh, in Ohio. Uh, the second way uh, is through uh, in-person sports books. So this could be at a casino, Racino, the sports teams are thinking of starting some of these, this is your traditional, there'll be a bar and TVs, there'll be a, a uh, not a cage, but rather a, uh, a window where you can go and, and bet on sports, right? Um, right. In person. And, and there will be, uh, under the latest version of the bill, 37 of those, um, you know, five for each of the big counties, four for smaller counties, and so on and so forth. And so there'll be 37 of those in Ohio, likely to be at, you know, the 11 casinos and racinos, and then, um, you know, sports teams, et cetera. So there will be 37 of these. And the final way, and this is still something that's being worked out, is, you know, you see those red Kino machines right. at bars and restaurants that the Lottery uh, Commission operates, and you will be able to bet a smaller amount, up to $200, uh, on those machines. Okay, so in total then, uh, what, how, what's the total number of licenses that will be available right now? Uh, so... I'm 50, 50 for the online right. mobile applications, 37 for the in-person sports books, and then for the Kino machines, it's anyone, anyone who's got a, a Kino machine uh, or wants to, you know, apply for one. Okay, and what would be the cost of these licenses? And and who, who can, get, uh, in addition to these people, uh, not, not all of these locations are going to have their own sports books, right? So you're going to have. Um, DraftKings, you're going to have FanDuel, uh, perhaps uh, um, uh, BetMGM, right? They are the ones who are going to actually have the book, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, so they, those, they will be the operators. So for an online mobile application, it's a million dollars over three years. And then for an in-person sports books, it's $100,000 over three years for the licenses. Okay, so it's a million dollars over three years, and well, it's not over three years; it's, it's for a three-year for a three-year period. Yeah, that's oh, right. Okay, and then the other one was how much? It's a hundred thousand dollars for uh, a a three-year license. 
Okay. And this this would be the casinos, racinos, and all of that? Yeah, that's exactly right. Casinos, racinos, sports teams, somewhere else, you know, places like that. Oh, okay. And, and I know that uh, Ohio's professional sports teams have gotten together, and, you know, Kurt Steiner is the spokesman for the group, I guess, and, and they're sort of supporting this. Um, but what about, for example, and for football, college teams? Um, because I'm, I'm reminded, I saw a story from the Associated Press that said that the Fiesta Bowl has uh, reached agreement with MGM, Bet MGM, for a sports book at, at, at the bowl game. So they're going to set up a special lounge where people can go and bet, you know, on college. Is, is betting on college games also going to be permitted uh, in Ohio? Um, yeah, so uh, it, it could be. Uh, I personally support betting on college sports, but uh, the bill is currently written, allows the Casino Control Commission, which will regulate most of sports betting and currently regulates our casinos and racinos. The bill is currently written, allows them to make the decision on on whether betting on college sports is allowed. Oh, okay. Um, so when when Ohio was going through this, <clears throat> through these gyrations years ago as to whether or not to expand gambling uh, to, in, uh, to include uh, Vegas-style casinos and all of that, there was a lot, of, a lot of debate on that. And one of the arguments from the proponents was, you know, um, not having gambling does not mean Ohioans are not gambling. In fact, there was a number I saw that a billion dollars a year was being taken out of the state to people who are going to, uh, to the casinos in West Virginia and, and Pennsylvania and, 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 and other, Atlantic City, Vegas, and all of that. Um, are there any estimates as to you know, what the revenue stream would be like, you know, what the state of Ohio can expect to generate? Uh, can you give us an idea on that? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, once uh, once it is totally built out, it will be, you know, tens of millions of dollars, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. But for, for me, I think it's important uh, for people to know that, look, I, I do not believe we should do this because the state is going to make money off of it. In fact, I think that, you know, the tax rate should be as low as possible. It's currently 10 percent. Right. I'd like it to be, frankly, a little bit lower than that. I think, you know, more like. 7.57%. Um, but anyways, I think that it should be as low as possible. Uh, but, but you know, the, we're not doing this for the state, right? We're doing this for the people of Ohio who want sports betting. Uh, and so, you know, in order to bring people up and off of the black market, which does exist, right. you know, we really need the tax rate to be, uh, you know, as low as possible. Okay, so... Where, where does this legislation stand today? And, and what do you anticipate occurring when the General Assembly returns to business? And what kind of time frame are we talking about? Yeah, uh, so the bill, the bill that was voted out of the Senate and is in the House, it was actually, there was a Senate amendment uh, with an updated version included in House Bill 29, which was now sent to a conference committee. A conference committee is the committee that works right. out differences between the House and the Senate. Uh, and the, it is currently there. I think that that conference committee will form and, you know, do its work. And I'm, I'm hopeful that a final bill will be, you know, done by uh, the end of the year or, or, you know, here in the next couple months. But, you know, I definitely think we, we need to act quickly. Uh, and, you know, the people of Ohio want this. They wanted it for three years. And so I think it's, it's time for us to, to get this done. Okay, which is, and then I, and I read a piece about, yes, three years ago, the U.S. Supreme Court ruling opened the door for this. Why did it take Ohio so long? Why does it almost seem that Ohio lags behind? Because more than half the states in America today have legal sports betting. Why are we so slow in, 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 in sort of pursuing these kinds of things? Well, you know, I, I think that Ohio uh, largely is never the first to do something and we're never the last. I think that, you know, we like to see what, uh, what happens in other states um, and then, you know, go from there. I think on, on this particular issue, I certainly wish we could have gotten this done in June. I think, 
you know, that right. would have been good, and I'm disappointed that we did not. Why didn't it happen? Uh, well, I think a variety of reasons, but but I think that, you know, we in the Senate were, frankly, a little bit too slow to, to move the bill out of, out of the Senate. Okay. Um, now, there is a question, however, and, and, and the, I've, I've seen this in a couple of stories, about whether the Ohio Constitution allows law, lawmakers to expand gambling via sports betting. Uh, what have you found and what, have you, what has your staff, uh, the committee staff, found in, in researching this issue? Yeah, I think it's, it is a good question. Um, uh, the, the answer, frankly, is that, uh, you know, we believe we have the authority to do it. Uh, we are going to do it. And if it gets challenged, then the courts will decide whether uh, we have the authority to do it. But, but I think that, you know, we, we do believe we have the authority to, to do this. Okay, um, and, and not surprisingly, the opposition to expansion of gambling in Ohio is building. Uh, there are people who are speaking out. Uh, the argument is the same one that was made when uh, the push for Vegas style you know, casinos was being debated. And uh, they say that you know, this will prey on the poor, the people who can least afford it. Um, but, but from where I sit, I mean, sports betting isn't like going and playing the slots. I mean, right? You have to have, first of all, an interest. Uh, if, you, if you want to be part of the NFL, if you want to bet on the NFL this year, you have to be, have an interest in football, number one, and number two, have an interest in the NFL. Is that, is, is that a counter-argument to be made that this is not something where the guy on the street can be able, will be able to just go ahead and you know, plonk down some money to, to bet on, on a team? Yeah, I, I think that's right. I think that, um, you know, anytime we expand gambling, obviously we should do it, you know, very carefully, but uh, I think that's what we're doing. Uh, but, but we have to remember gambling is happening right now. Uh, it's 100% happening right now. And so, you know, we, we need to do it safely. We need to do it, uh, you know, well, uh, which is why we're doing it, you know, through the legal means. Um, so, with with uh, regards to um, the the licenses, it, it, it seems that the the the, the fifty plus thirty seven, and then of course any any kino machine, um, it it seems as though it's going to be sort of um, controlled. But what if uh, somebody owns, for example? a uh, entertainment business and wants to you know to provide uh, sports betting uh, in, in his or her business um, can is there an avenue there at all or is this the way it has been set up is going to be pretty much uh, restricted no they could uh, you know there are uh, B licenses which are in-person sports books they are uh, available, um, and so you know they could apply for a B license. And and what what would be the the qualifications for applying? Um, how do you determine whether a, a, a group or an individual is 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 sort of uh, has the wherewithal? Yeah. So the Casino Control Commission is going to adopt rules uh, to ensure that you know any business that you know, gets a license is, is able to have the financial, you know, capability to, you know, pay out any bets that they take and, and also to be a, a successful business. And so the Casino Control Commission, you know, as the regulating agency uh, will be the one to decide that. Um, and, and so given, given what's going on right now, um, what is your expectation as to or what we're going to see as far as uh, time frame. Uh, would, would you think that there is enough momentum right now in the General Assembly to have this passed before the end of the year and signed into law before the end of the year? Or Yeah, I, I, do, I do think, you know, I think we were very hopeful for June 30th, obviously, that that did not happen. But I think now that, you know, that has passed, I think we all have to shoot for, uh, we all have to shoot for uh, the end of the year. Okay. 
Um, and, and, and as far as, as, far as Ohio as, uh, joining, the others, uh, joining the majority of the states, um, is, is it your expectation that um, this is going to be uh, something that Ohio is going to uh, put Ohio in the, sort of in the group of, of states that are sort of loosening the, the ties on or the reins on uh, on gambling in the state. Is this is there a, is, should there be a concern that we are just going too far when we start legalizing all of these sports, uh, uh, these betting uh, avenues? No, I think that I think that you know we are doing it in a uh, appropriate fashion, um, and and I think that uh, uh, you know we're doing it in a safe fashion, and so I think that you know look, we we do not want to be the only state who doesn't do this. We are on track uh, for that to be the case right now, and so you know I think we have to move very quickly in order to get this done. Okay, um, and, and and as far as <clears throat> as far as the um, the betting itself goes, um, will if for, for example the casinos and the racinos, will they be required to have? Now obviously they'll be. You, you go to the windows, right, and you can bet at the windows. But they will also will they also be required to have set aside lounges where you know you have all of these TV screens and you can watch all these. How, how is is there? Have you all gone down to, down to those kinds of details as to what it's, what the expectation is? So, so again, those, those are not going to be required. I mean, obviously, if they want to do a successful sports book, you know, they would likely do that. But there's no requirement for that. Uh, there is no requirement of the format of of the sports book, no. Oh, okay. And as far as the sports book itself is concerned. There is, in addition to FanDuel, in addition to uh, uh, you know DraftKings and and uh, BetMGM, you have uh, uh, Bet Rivers, and you have others. Will will any any of those sports book national sports books be able to come into Ohio uh, to operate, or how does that work? Yeah, so uh, you know they will have to partner with an Ohio based business like a sports team or casino or racino. Uh, but yeah, they are likely to be the gaming operator. So there will be the license holder and they'll be the operator. They're likely to be the operator. Oh, OK. All right. And, and we keep talking. And this is the other issue that was raised was about the sports teams being able to offer sports betting, right? So if you went to a Browns game and you went to the Browns stadium, you would, in, in theory, be able to bet on games there, right? Yeah, so uh, under the bill, uh, the sports teams will, will both qualify to be able to apply for an online mobile application for sports betting, oh. uh, as well as an in-person sports book. And so they could actually uh, do both. Does that? I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure out how that works. I mean, um, was has there been any discussion about? I'm sure you remember the 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 Pete Rose, you know, situation that still that still exists and still is talked about. Um, is there any? Was there any discussion about? You know, how do you have a professional sports team actually? Yeah, so, you know, the, the sports team is not going to be managing the sports book. They're, they are going to contract that out to a gaming operator like DraftKings, like FanDuel, like BetMGM, like Barstool. Uh, they're the ones who are going to be running. So the, the sports teams will never see the odds or they are not the odds makers, you know, et cetera. And so, you know, the, all of those protections are there. And there's even additional protections such as if you are a – you know, a player or a coach or, you know, the immediate family member or a player or coach, you cannot bet on sports, actually. You're disqualified from betting on, on sports. And so, um, you know, those protections are there as well. Okay. Um, in a di 
beyond the fact that you know you you felt that you know this was something that Ohio should be doing, um, how does how did this become one of your? I'm going to call it a pet project in the legislature. What? Uh, well, it's obviously, you know, a major issue that the, the state is facing and, and, you know, that's got my interest. I, I have, I think, an interest in, in gaming in general and also an interest in sports legislation. And, you know, this is sort of the, the combination of, of all of that. And, and then, of course, there's a whole argument about education. And when, when the Ohio lottery was created, uh, money was supposed to go into, uh, for, was to be funneled for education in the state. And there's always been a debate as to really how, whether that was, that promise has been kept or whether, you know, money was, went into the general fund for education but then was taken out that was going to education previously. Uh, is there, what is the, what's the discussion as to this revenue that's going to be generated by by this uh, sports betting as to whether or not it's being directed for education? Well, 98%, uh, actually, I think in the updated bill, it's 90% of the funds are going to education. The others are going to problem gaming and youth sports, but 90% of the funds are going to go to education, K through 12 education. 90% of the money generated, the funds generated for the state through the, um, taxes and all of that, right? Correct. 90% of the tax revenues uh, off of game, off of sports gaming will be going to K-12 education. And is there any specific way the money is to be distributed when it goes into the education fund, or is that being left? Uh, it goes uh, to the formula as it exists. Oh, okay. There's a current education formula, and it right. goes into that formula. Okay. Well, um, is, is there, after this, and, and, and of course there's, there's always discussion that, you know, this is just another door that's being opened to, uh, you know, to sort of take money out of the pockets of Ohioans. Um, is there anything else in, on the horizon that, <laughs> that you can see occurring that, uh, again, would be considered expansion of gambling, or do you think this is the last sort of cog? No, I, I think that this is it. But, you know, I would also make the argument that, look, no Ohioan is going to be forced to bet on sports. So their money isn't being taken from them. They are choosing, uh, they are going to choose to bet on sports. And, and, you know, I can tell you, look, the number one question I get everywhere I go is, you know, what's going on with COVID? Yeah. The number two question uh, is, is, is when are we going to legalize sports betting? So I can just tell you, Ohioans want this. And in the in the hearings that you've had uh, on on this legislation on this bill, um, what has been the the, the argument? I'm, I'm sure you've you've heard the argument made as to Ohioans wanting sports betting, and I'm sure you've heard the arguments against it. Uh, but what has been the most uh, cogent argument in favor of sports betting? Is it because People just enjoy the game even more if they're able to bet on games as, as one of the uh, stories. Well, indicated. I, I don't think it's an argument. I, I think it's the fact that I can tell you everywhere I go, I get, I talk to people who want to be able to bet on sports and that's what they care about. So at some point, you know, what the public wants has to be what we do. You know, it can't just all be top down governing. The people want sports betting and, and we should be able to give it to them. Okay, so finally, I, I, I need to raise this issue. I, I'm sure, and I'm, I shouldn't take this for granted, but I know some bookies in, in this region. And I'm sure there are a lot of Ohioans who know bookies or also know people who know bookies where they bet on games even today. I mean, you know, the NFL season has begun, and I'm sure there's a lot of betting going on in Ohio. Um, and I... I talked to somebody who had had a conversation with a bookie when, when this legislation was introduced, when your legislation was introduced, and there was a discussion about, you know, well, that's going to, you know, 
cut the legs off from, from this illegal gambling, uh, illegal, you know, for a football, you know, betting and uh, sports betting. And, and uh, <laughs> one of the bookies said, well, uh, yeah, uh, it, it obviously it'll affect their business, but he also pointed out that if you bet under your legislation, if, if uh, sports betting is legal in Ohio, and you bet, and you win beyond, I, I don't know what the what the threshold is where you have to pay taxes. Uh, right now, for for the Ohio lottery, if you win more than five hundred dollars, uh, you have to pay taxes. Um, but this bookie seemed to suggest that because you're betting illegally, <laughs> you don't pay taxes on your winnings. So is there anything in the bill that sort of addresses this um, the illegal uh, sports betting that has been going on you know, for you know, as long as anyone can remember in the state? Well, I mean, illegal sports betting is just that illegal. And Sounds like this bookie friend of yours is uh, violating the law and probably needs to go to jail. Um, but, you know, look, I think if, if illegal sports betting is found, you know, those people should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law and, and, and go to jail. But look, that's one of the reasons we're doing this is because we know that that happens uh, in the dark of the night. And this is going to move it uh, into sunshine where it should be. Okay. Well, Senator, if there's anything... If you'd like to add anything more about this legislation or um, let our viewers know what's coming, you know, I appreciate it. Otherwise, uh, I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for joining us and uh, all the best. And uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll be perhaps uh, hearing much, some more about this legislation when the General Assembly returns. Anytime. Thanks. Thank you. I want to thank Ohio State Senator Niraj Antani for joining me today to discuss the push in the General Assembly to make sports betting in Ohio legal. It's unfortunate, however, that it has taken so long. After all, the U.S. Supreme Court opened the door to this form of gambling three years ago. The second installment of this podcast on the legalization of sports betting in Ohio will be aired live on Thursday, October 7, on WFMJ.com and other platforms, including ScribblerGroup.com. My guest list reads like a who's who in sports in the region. They are knowledgeable, opinionated, and can even be downright disagreeable. Because we will be streaming live, viewers can submit questions and comments through Scribbler Group Facebook page or our YouTube channel or by emailing betohiosports at gmail.com. My thanks to Robert McFerrin, director of Triad Production Group, a division of 21 WFMJ, who produced this podcast, and Andy Kunkel, the technical director.